that Denmark uh, has a very strong tradition for uh, uh, mathematical uh, sciences, uh, but also for for um, no, university and education in in general. Uh, I studied their actuarial uh, science. Do you know what actuarial science is? It is it is mathematics in insurance. Do you know what an actuary is? Do you know what the difference between an actuary and a terrorist is? <laughs> the, di the difference is that the terrorist you can negotiate with. So <laughs> this is the picture of actuaries. They have very strong. Uh... So I want to talk to you about how to build a good pension system. Uh, now you. Most of you are so young, so you should not think about pension system. It would be bad. You should think about working and not about stopping working. Nevertheless, sooner or later, you will have to talk, think about it. And I would be very surprised if not several of you in whatever future profession you have will be working with this issue because it's one of the most important, in my mind, one of the most important tasks for any country everywhere in the world, but not the least also for Russia. So if you can can um, figure out how to do this, then for sure you have a, a good career in front of you. The, the, the title I put here is to build, how to build a sustainable uh, pension system. Do you know what sustainable means? Then you know more than me. <laughs> what does it mean? Sustainable. I think, I think it, it, it means something like you should only, you should only use the resources you create. So you cannot spend more money than you earn, or you cannot chop down more trees than they grow, and you cannot take out something from Earth unless you put something back or, or so. So, in a, so if, you, if you use the word sustain, it's, it's the most popular word. It's, you cannot open a paper in the West without sustainable, sustainable, sustainable. Everything is sustainable. But for a pension system, what I mean with this is a pension system that one allows people to have a proper pension at a proper age without taking away the possibility for next generation to have the same. This, this is for me what it means. Then to answer the question, you must of course answer when is proper age, what is proper money? Already this is really tricky questions. Um, why is it so so interesting right now, why it is so much debated, and why is it a common issue all over the world? It is simply because people live longer and have fewer kids. If you look on the upper one, it describes the difference between 1960 and 2009, how many kids on average uh, does a family have. And no country is above two. And I don't think you have to be mathematicians to understand that if two people have kids, they need to have two, otherwise there will be fewer and fewer. And in fact, they need to have a little bit more than two because some will die in early, early age. And at the same time, the, the, uh, the life we live gets longer and longer. Also in all countries, Russia, unfortunately, much lower and slower, but still it's growing a little bit. Maybe it will pick up. But for some, some countries, it is like 10 years difference uh, uh, in these 50 years. So this puts, of course, pressure. If fewer uh, are born and, and uh, we live longer. Because this means then that there will be fewer people working and more people on pension. And this is the opposite to sustainability, because then we spend here more than this, this can produce. It's also true for all countries. Uh, this one is uh, forward-looking, so it is, it is um, prognosis. So you can see that, for instance, uh, Turkey today, there are 10, 10 people working on every uh, pe person on pension. But after, after another uh, 40 years, it will only be three. So only one third left. Then you can understand even more it is a, it is a big task how to build this. At the same time, people are not saving themselves. 
If people save themselves, there would be no issue. It doesn't, doesn't matter how many li are born or, or how long we live, because if everyone f saved for his own pension, the, the question is solved. But they do not, uh, not at all, you can say, mainly because government are still paying more pensions than government can afford. And if people have this in their mind that the government will pay for me anyway, then they won't save. So only in, in countries like here where you can see that the government themselves are paying only like 30% uh, of your, of your uh, salary in pension, then people start to save a little bit themselves. But if government pay like many European countries around 70, nothing, nothing has happened. And why do then uh, government pay more than they can afford? even if it's clear that it's wrong. Because otherwise they're not re-elected. It's as simple as this. I think this is one of the most evident problems with the Western, Western democracy model. Because if you re-elect people on very short terms, it's very difficult to make a long-term decision. Look here on Germany. Germany is, as far as I know, one of the absolute richest countries in the world. People have really good life. There is no unemployment. There is high uh, uh, wealth, welfare levels. There are high um, uh, payment, co-payment from state for health and whatever. They wanted to increase uh, uh, retirement age, the, 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 the age you go to pension, from 65 to 67. It should be nothing, right? They could work until they are 85, 90, easily. These are strong German people with good health care, everything. They are not smoking, they are not drinking, they will not start a new war, I hope at least, so they could easily do this. And still, when they tried to do this small change, people uh, went on the streets and protested. So, not only is the task big, it seems almost impossible to solve when you combine it with, with the, the political uh, situation. If you sum all these things up, uh, plus a few that was not on, on this scale, uh, like the uh, general economy of, of, of the country, uh, the health situation and so forth, uh, then you can get some pension sustainability index. And to no surprise, I think Greece is on the top of this. They have a really big problem to solve. I mean, it's really big. People that was working in, in, uh, uh, in government in Greece, they could go on pension at the age of 50 with compensation at 80% of salary for the rest of their life. Of course, it's, <laughs> it's... And now it has to be fixed. Here in the bottom, you can find Australia. I have no idea how Australian system is put together, but somehow they must have done something wrong. But second from bottom, at least, is my home country, Sweden. So we are very green here. It's a, it is a sustainable system. And when we built this system, I was very much part of this. So I have, have been working very intensively, both with the technical part of it, but also we're trying to convince uh, stakeholders like uh, pension, uh, pensioners' organizations, like political parties, like employers' organizations, and so forth. Uh, why, why, do we have, why have we done it in Sweden when they have not done it in Spain? Uh, is it because Swedes are better actuaries? Of course we are, but I don't think this is the reason. The reason is we had our own crisis in the 90s. We had a really self-made crisis. It was really bad management, so we had a crisis. And then you need a crisis to fix it. Uh, so maybe you can be a little bit more optimistic because now many of these countries are in a crisis or at least very close to a crisis. So maybe they will now get some uh, uh, speed to do something. So, I think I should then spend some time describing how we did it, because I think it is one, at least, of the best patterns. On, for instance, there was in Moscow recently, I live and work in Moscow, uh, there was a um, conference uh, organized by the Minister of Health, uh, Ministry of Health, and there were experts from all over the world, from World Bank, from uh, UN, from wherever, and 
and uh, most of them use the Swedish example as the school book, so to say. So how do you build pension system? You build them on three pillars. Three and a half, maybe, but three, basically. You have something that is paid from the state, for instance, for people who don't have a work or cannot work, invalid or whatever. Then you have something that is paid uh, from employers, for those who have a work. And then you have something that is paid by the individuals themselves for those who have any money left in the end of the month. My, my kids, they say there is too much, much month in the end of the money, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, one thing which is completely misunderstood in Russia, in, in, in my opinion, because I'm often asked by colleagues, of course, but also journalists or um, in insurance union and so and they, especially journalists, they say often like Russian people are financially illiterate. They, they don't know this um, financial mechanism they, they, and, and uh, therefore we need to educate them better. And then when they understand, then they will save to their pension. And this I think is completely wrong. Uh, you will never get a Russian person taking money out of the pocket to put it somewhere where he might get something 40 years later. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not uh, likely. So in my view, you should really build the system on that the employer pay for the employee's uh, pension. Then you can succeed. There are several advantages because you can set up a system through, through the HR department where, where it's automated and, uh, and it becomes uh, more efficient. Uh, you, can, uh, you can have you have some security because on how the, the employer is committed to his employees. And what we did, we did it very much a part of agreement where you have agreement between unions, the unions of workers and uh, and the union of um, uh, employ em employers union. There is of course a backside because if you do it rather built on private paying, you can do it more adapted to, to your economy in, in total. So for instance, if you own a house, you need less pension than if you don't own a house. And, and, uh, but still, in my view, it's, it's very much better to build on, on advantages outweigh disadvantages by far. So, how did we do? We built it, of course, on three pillars, as I said. The first pillar is uh, what comes from the state, and within this first pillar we have three, you can say, sub-pillars, sub three, three parts of it. First one, which I think we are uh, alone of is that we have a fictitious account. Every person in Sweden who works, 16% is set off for pension on his account. But it's not his account. It's just it's just a paper. But but it but it is is there. So so uh, one thing every Swede knows it is that in March he gets the or orange envelope. So he receives in the post box an orange envelope, he opens this and he can see so much is on my account and this means that under these circumstances I will get this much when I, when I retire. But it's not his money. But it's not either the state's money. So the politicians cannot take this money and uh, spend it on uh, building roads or so. So it's, it's, it's separated, it's separated out of the budget, but it's still not his money. 16% of all uh, uh, your income. And then this money is not growing because of um, interest rates or because of um, uh, if stock exchange goes up and down, it's growing with the average growth of wa wages, uh, salaries. So if salaries increase 10, your account will increase 10. And then when you retire at 67, then it becomes your money. Then this money is transferred to a, a, a normal annuity, where, normal financial instrument where you pay. pay. This is the first sub part of this uh, first pillar. Second pillar is also money from the state, but now it's paid to you. Not so you can go and buy something for it, but it is actually your money, but it's locked in. 
but it belongs to you. It's not paper, it's money. So, so this pays, and, and then you make choice. Where should this money go? And this we had a lot of discussions of, can people make the choices? How many choices? How should you qualify to be, be a, a part of this? And it is maybe not so good, but um, at least not perfect, but we have 800 funds. So every Swedish person picks from these 800, one to five. Most people would take some three of them safe, like some um, global funds, maybe both uh, containing interest-bearing instruments and equities. And then you take someone and put like equities in India or equities in Russia or something where you have higher risk, but hope to get better, uh, better yield. But it is, of course, a very, very difficult choice for everyone to do. Uh, but this is, anyway, how we decided to do it. Uh, if you make no choice, there is a default fund managed by government. Uh, no, it's not secure. It's, it's like 50-50 uh, bonds and equities. But um, this is where, where money ends if you don't do anything. So here there is no indexing. Of, here your money will be what your money will be and it will depend on your choice and it will be huge differences. Some will have lost all their money, some will have huge uh, growth of it. And, uh, but but, but it's, this is of course sustainable. This is sustainable because people's money is people's money, it's your own money and it's your problem if it became less or no subsidy from, from taxpayers. So that's second of it, of these sub-pillars of the state paid. And the third one is, you can say, a pure guarantee. Because you, the first two are building on the fact that you are working. Both of them are percent of salary. But of course, there are people who do not work who, for re various reasons. And then there is just a simple, simple guarantee uh, that, that basically makes you get 40% of your average salary during your last five years, I believe it is. So depending on how much income you have had, uh, this will come from guarantee or it will come from your own. So this is pr pure protection for poor people, so to say. This is the first pillar. And as I said, this money is not uh, in the state budget was maybe the most tricky for us because how can you convince a politician that he should not have access to this money? Politicians want money because money is power. With money you can do things. With money you can be re-elected. And here they had to take their hands off. So we created uh, a separate uh, what we call buffer funds outside reach of politicians. In, in fact, we created several, so there would be some competition. So if one has better performance, or if one has worse than the others, then you can fire the management of this and, and put in some new, and you can all the time have this. So they are currently uh, around Euro 100 billion. And this is currently covering four years of, of uh, payout. But I mean, it comes new, still more new money in than, than uh, money out. This is quite, it's, it is very well known thing how they are performing these funds and, and the government is quite tough on the people that, that because they have the, they have the power to uh, appoint or, or uh, fire the management. So is it sustainable or st stable? Premium pension, fully, this one where you make your own choices, it's fully sustainable, no problem. This income pension is at least close to being sustainable uh, because you have this money in and you have the uh, account. But of course, if you index this money with average and at the same time the buffer funds perform very well, sooner or later you will have a problem. And therefore we have built in a few things for this. This is a last one is a, a technical way of saying there is a pre-designed way how to reduce people's uh, pension if, thing, if things do not go right. So it, it, it is made also out of reach of the politicians. They cannot say we reduce by 10 because it's already a calculated mechanism so they, they cannot access it. Uh, 
And then there is also, this is typical actuarial work uh, behind this, there is also all the time recalculating on how long will women live, how long will men live, blah, 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 how are these risks, yes. What is the source of this buffer of funds money? What, where it comes from for buffer of funds? What is like, is there a constant it's, percentage? It's, it's, it's the 16% of salaries. 16% of salaries. I mean, you, when you collect money, you immediately have to pay this money for current pensions. So where? Yes, but uh, yes, but this 16% which is coming in is more than what you pay out to pensions. Of course, you do not pay in some money and pay out some others. You pay first. You use this money and pay for current. But what is rest is then uh, put into the to the buffer funds. So this was the first pillar. The second one, which is mainly, which is, um, I think, will long term be the most strong, is that for every for every uh, person working, there is an agreement, uh, not between him and the company, but it's an agreement between the employers' organization and the workers' association that a certain amount of money will not be paid as salary, it will be paid as, as um, pension. And it's about 90% of all, all people that are working are within these agreements between uh, labor unions and, and employers' unions. Those who are not is mainly those who are self-employed and then they have to fix it themselves. They, they, they just make their own choice. And then there is set up uh, central uh, between these parties, a company owned by these uh, uh, parties between the labor union and the employer unions. So through this central, once again, everyone makes choice. So you make one choice for this um, in the, within the first pillar, the state money, uh, the two and a half percent, you put in equity funds, but here you have the same, but here you choose the insurance company and not a uh, mutual fund. And you can make choice of, of um, uh, a unit linked, meaning that you can make your own investment choices. This is not allowed in Russia today. The government is afraid that if people lose money, they will ask the government to fill up the money and therefore they don't allow for it. Or you can have a more, a more um, uh, safe bet with the guarantee. But most people choose this unit linked. So here, employer pays through this central, you get, uh, now it's on the internet, but before it was on paper, you get a list and you choose your insurance companies where you want this, this money put. And this is, of course, uh, uh, this one is, of course, once again, fully sustainable because there is no promises between generations. It's your money is, is developing your money. And the third one, also in a country like ours, is small. People do not, people do not save private money for pensions, not more than there are really strong tax subsidies. Like in the 80s, we had you could deduct, we had 50% tax, and you could deduct everything you saved for pension. So then people saved. But if you don't have this kind of, no one does it. But okay, 40% of Swedes uh, save, but it's small amount. This is this is a small amount. Uh, so the bigger part is what the employer provides. So what can one learn? Then this one, I'm sorry, is first one is wrong. It should be uh, uh, vice versa. Uh, I think what is very important when you try to build a system like this, it, at least this was guiding us when we did it, is try to use uh, government money efficiently. So as soon as you work, try to build it on the employer. If you want more, build it on your own. But of course, some base you should, should then uh, have paid from state. But if you have state pension for everyone, it becomes very inefficient and not sustainable. And then I think, it remains of course to be seen, uh, but I think there is a big advantage that right people make the decision on the investment so for instance, the state pension guarantee, which is a solidarity thing, of course state should choose how to manage funds because it's their risk. 
So therefore, they can manage money. Money and risk goes always hand in hand. But if state pays to your individual account, then you should make the choice. Then it should not be a big pension fund for the country. Then you should make your own choices. Because sooner or later, then people will at least uh, understand. The same goes for the employer. Uh, before, not so long ago, almost all uh, pensions from employers was what was called defined benefit, meaning a promise from the employer saying, when you go on pension, we will pay 20% of your lost salary for 20 years, something like this. So then it's, then it's a benefit that is promised to, to the person. And then the risk is with the company, so the company should manage the money. But if it is a defined contribution, if you give money into an account of the individual, then it should not be shares of the company you work in. Then you should have the choice of saying, I want uh, bonds in Japan, or I want this or, or that. Uh, and this was a big change for us. Your individual money, of course, you make your own choices for. Another thing. Where, where, where I think Russian system is not very well constructed it, because it's constructed on the basis of pension fund. And pension funds, it's money only. And therefore, you don't have the tools to build uh, what is here called security, meaning uh, other risks than if money uh, increases or loses. So, for instance, on this security list. An insurance company can have a product that says, whatever happens, the, the growth, the, the, uh, the yield on your money will never be less than 2%. This we can construct. This cannot pension fund construct. An insurance company can construct saying, however long you live, you will have uh, the same amount anyway. It will not stop even if you become 120, because we have the tools for it. We can also say, if you have not a too long life, but a too short life, we can construct some protections, maybe for the children, maybe for the spouse. We can do something about sickness risks. If there are sick, so you, you cannot work, then you can, we can handle this. And therefore, I think very much speaks for building the majority of this on insurance products, not bank products and not mutual fund products. So, this is last slide. What is the biggest challenges to build a sustainable pension fund? Especially with, the, with the eyes on Russia, this one. The first one is here, the rest of Europe have now the problem that interest rates are too low. It's really, really tough for life insurance comp pension companies in, in Europe. Most of them are very close to, uh, be, because if you have put promises to your customers of 3% and interest rates are 1%, of course, you have a big problem. Here the problem is the opposite. Here the bank deposit rate is so high. So why should you have any other financial instrument than, than a bank deposit? And, and uh, therefore there is not this underlying in, incitement for people to go, because normally an, a pension investment should be able to yield more than a short term because you can have more long-term uh, investment horizon. You can have illiquidity products, you can invest in, um, in uh, infrastructure products, uh, projects and things you cannot do as an individual. But if you anyway get so much on spare bank accounts, so why should you uh, take this? This is a big uh, challenge. Here will be a huge challenge for, for uh, it's everywhere. I mean, also in Sweden, we have real pro problems. How should we give advice to people so uh, when they should choose between 800 mutual funds? How should we structure this advice? And of course, it pops up a lot of um, uh, uh, brokers, advisors, sellers, who see big dollar signs, here I can make money on saying that I can give you so much better advice, so you will have so much. And this one will for sure be an <laughs> a challenge in, in this country. Uh, we tried to, to build this on internet advice, so you can simulate on internet to keep costs down, because every percentage that goes to an intermediary, it reduces severely your, your end pension. So this will be 
trick. There are several ideas how to do it here as well being discussed right now. And then maybe the most difficult, should it be sustainable? It cannot be accessible for politicians. They, they should not be, it cannot even be accessible for politi political decisions. Like I said, they should not be allowed to say we reduce 10. This you should have built in before. How should it react on falling wages? How should it react on, on whatever? Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of money, so, so it, it will for sure be a challenge also here. So, that's, that's what I had to say about pensions. <laughs> So, questions, please. Uh, well, I have three questions, but then I'll, I'll wait. Two small questions. So, so you are you are not afraid of possible inflation? Because we in Russia, uh, the rate of inflation technically is higher than the interest rate in, 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 in uh, deposit. So, if I give you money, I will lose all my money. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but. As I said, I mean, it's not built on whether individuals want to give money for pension or not. They don't have the choice. The majority of money is coming not from individuals, from state or from employer. You, don't, you cannot say to your employer, I don't want pension, I just want salary because inflation is so high, so it will be nothing. It's, it's already there. So it's really not an issue, that's part, part of, of it. And the other one is that uh, currently we are not afraid of inflation. But of course, here we talk about 40, 50, 60, no one can know what happens in, in this, in this uh, time. But what is your advice to, to us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about pension, my future pension, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, imagine. no, but, uh, okay. This is what I tried to say. Uh, what, what Russian people, if I'm frank, think wrong. They think pension, they think I should pay my money to pension. This is not good. I don't think you should put your money to pension. I think Russia should construct a system where these two pillars are almost all. And that's it. Then you don't have to think of this. If you, if you are... Uh, pessimistic about this uh, system being constructed during your uh, active lifetime, then I think there is not so strong arguments for putting very much personal money into pensions. I mean, better you try to figure out how you can invest them. Unless it comes a big, big uh, tax advantage or so, but, but uh, I mean, if you have 100, 100, say, should I put in pension, should I put in uh, spare bank account? The argument is not so strong. It's not. It should be built on this, these two. Uh, and you said that one of the main point is to take politicians' hands of the pensions. Mm. Uh, yeah, it sounds reasonable, but at the same time, in Russia, for for some recent years, uh, pension deficit was financed by the budget. So the Russian pension system nowadays can't exist without financing from the outside, especially from the budget of future generation or something like this. So we should reconstruct the system before we take the position out. Yes, but hands off does not mean that there cannot be. Uh, help from, from uh, government. You can predefine it. This is, the, this, this is the issue here. There is a predefined way to reduce, there is a predefined way to increase in this. But it is not singular decisions of politicians, like now we put another 5% or now we do not put another 5%. It's a mechanism that is already there. Yeah. It's unrealistic to think you can build a pension system completely without uh, some taxpayers uh, subsidizing other taxpayers. Of course you have to do this. But you should not allow for these singular decisions on it. This, this is my, my point. So how did you do it in Sweden? It's built, it's built like the money from the state. When it increases, how it increases, or when it decreases, or how it decreases. It's a mathematical formula. The, 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 uh, decided by the politicians, and what was crucial for us was that we got all political parties to 
to decide on the mathematical. I think the only time they had the mathematical formula on the table of, of, um, of uh, the government because, because now it's decided by everyone, meaning that whoever, whoever be elected, they are also part of the decision on this formula. And therefore it will last over, I hope we have calculated right, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it will show in the future. <laughs> Such decisions in Russia are, 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 couldn't be made because most of the people who go to elections are pension pensioners, so they they don't want to vote for such crucial decisions. No, but this is true in every in every country so more or less. How how would you mean it in Sweden? How do you explain? We had a crisis. We had a crisis. A crisis is good because if you have a big crisis, then you have to sort of understand that I cannot just think about fulfilling my promises I made when I was elected. I have to figure out what is good for the country. What what is what can we afford? So good, good solid crisis is really good for this. And this was one a second. A second thing I think I cannot compare, but for sure compared to Russia, we have this tradition of trying to find mutual solutions, so to say. There's this uh, uh, long, long time where we have, for all difficult things, tried to rather agree everyone than, than uh, making the best for some few ones. So maybe those two together. Plus a very good mathematical formula. <laughs> May I ask one more? Sure. Yeah. Uh, why, why didn't you use the mixed index rate just with inflation rate? Because it's too low in your country when you make an indexation of pension benefits, you use only wage. Yes, but the, why not? The, the, because we want it. When you when you say it's sustainable of this, then you should it should it should in the end produce uh, a, a pension which is reasonable compared to salaries somehow 70 percent 65 whatever and therefore it should grow with salaries rather than with with inflation if you if you grow it in my opinion inflation is the most uh, commonly used then it's more like a, a mathematical instrument for uh, maintaining buying power or how to say it. but if you if you link it to to uh, wages then you will follow the pensioners and and the working uh, population will will share destiny. This is this is, this was was why we chose this. If you if you look on if you look on pensions in in private insurance companies because I was managing uh, was CEO of life insurance company when this 2008 crisis it was really painful really painful because it's two things happening at the same time your liabilities are discounted at at um, current in interest rate and then you have your assets and we had large parts of asset in equities and then equity market fell and interest rate fell. So a balance sheet, you have liabilities, and so all liabilities went this way, and all assets went this way. It was really, really bad, really bad. The October 2008 was. Uh, if you look on this system, it performed through this, because it is not built up on uh, so big part yet being in, so, in these kind of assets. Of course, over time, if next, next crisis is when this system has been wor working for 20 years, for those who have chosen themselves to invest in such instruments, they will, it will be painful. But the system was never at, at uh, threat, but companies were. We, we solved it by buying, you know all of this, I think, by buying swaptions. Yeah. So we had one asset clause I will only have one time in my life. I mean, we had assets that were worth 100 that went to 5,000 just overnight. 
when, when interest, uh, and this, this we had not bought to speculate, but, but we bought them to hedge for this uh, liability interest rate. But then this scary thing happened. Before this, you never thought that uh, Lehman Brothers would fail. And of course, we're, these were behind the swaptions. So first you said, yes, we made it. Then will we get any money from them? So it was, it was very tough. No, no, true. Because it was not in our mind. These big banks could not fail. It, we, 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 we could not even imagine. I can ask. Uh, I have a question uh, related maybe to the experience of other countries. If you know, for example, I think in Norway they partly fund their pensions using the money coming from the oil income. Do you think that it's a good way for Russia to sort of take, for example, look at Swedish experience and also try to combine with the Norwegian experience? Do you think that this should be two different issues? In my, in my mind, it's, it should be two different. Uh, I mean, it's, it's absolutely true what you say. There is no people, I think, in the world who live a slower life than Norwegian pe people. They don't have to work at all because money is just pouring in from oil. Now, Russia has also a lot of oil, but if I look around, I cannot see that people have the Norwegian, uh, Norwegian life from, from, from this oil. No, but I think it's something different. Of course it is so that this uh, first pillar part, the more oil you have, the more generous you can make it. But I still think you should build in a mechanism for it, because oil prices also go up and down and, and whatever, so you, 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 you should build, and I definitely think you should build, regardless of how much oil you have, you should try to make the employer pay the majority of the pension, because if you have a lot of oil money. Why use this for people that have a good work? Better use it for building hospitals or for people who have no work. So, so, and people who have a decent work, they are able to set aside for their own pension. The problem is they will not do it if you give them the choice. And therefore you should have the employer sort of deciding on their behalf. It's sorry to say, I mean, people should make their own choices, but, but we can see what it leads to. And, and here I think it's a better construction. But it's of course good to have a lot of oil, yes, for sure. Uh, what do you think about the idea to make the age when I go to pension flexible? So it's for me to decide. Mm. I, if, I, if I'm ready to get very small pensions, I mm. go it's a good. It's really good, and there are more details to this than I than I had. We had it's built into this system. So from uh, from 65, you can uh, differs a little bit between different works you have had, but okay, then you can go to pension. But you can stay then until 75, and the multipl multiplicator here is huge. I mean, first of course you have full salary longer. And then you have not taken pension this year. So th there is no single thing to a pension system that has so big effect as if you, if you postpone your pension age because you substitute income to costs. Uh, so, so it's l like twi twice effect. And, and therefore, it's, it's really good. I think it's definitely people, people that can uh, work should keep on working. I don't think we should solve the uh, problem of unemployment among young people by, by uh, pushing out people in pension. It should be solved by creating new jobs. So, absolutely good. But I think that it's politically uh, visible. Yes, this, this is easier. But the problem is, it's, uh, it might be enough, but I, I think most often not. You need also to put this threshold. This is the, the, the difficult uh, political. To allow longer, no problem. Lower, you don't can afford. So, so uh, but of course you can make it step by step. Just curious, what do you think about the state of kind of well education about the pension systems in Russia? Because uh, for me, for example, when I lived in England, for me it was very, very really when financial advisor and financial advisor basically draws you 
uh, your, well, like basically your projected like time to retirement, uh, what your average income, how much you want to uh, earn in your pension, like gets every every month, and then he basically tells you like by the a certain age you should have say a million dollars. How do you feel about this? And I was like, well, okay. Uh, and, and so that's quite. I mean, you put things into perspective, and you, you know whether you should start saving more or less. Etc. Mm. And obviously, I don't think like in Russia the state of uh, education mm. from that part is is very advanced. And uh, who should do that? Mm. It should it mm. be like a private matter, or more like the government should be yeah. concerned with that? No, it's a really good question, and, and I have no really good answer. I mean, this IFA is in, in Britain, Independent Financial Advice, it's a very good uh, institution, so to say, seldom in others, other countries, even if brokers, like for instance, insurance brokers who do life, they also have this uh, projection. Problem is, it's too, so expensive. So now you were working Black Scholes for formula in, in uh, financial so I'm sure your salary was huge and then you can <laughs> then you can afford independent financial advisors. But the man on the street it make it is too expensive. Then we tried, as I said, to do the same on the internet and this orange envelope. So at least every person gets a paper every year. How, how many just throw it away and how many open it, I don't know, but but I think relatively majority opens and there they see these projections and then there is uh, uh, a link please go here it's absolutely free and 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 you go there and you put in uh, a code the system accesses all, all everything from state pension from private private paid from everything and it makes these projections and then you can simulate yourself do people use this no they don't they don't. So it's 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 difficult. Seems like to get this through, you need an individual meeting, uh, uh, someone talking to you, and uh, and then it becomes expensive. On the other hand, you you get the advice. Well, because normally first advice is always free. So you come to one session, you see that, and like that's enough now. You can say like, okay, I don't need any more advice. I can figure it out myself. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's really interesting. Let me tell you a short story. It's absolutely true. In, in, well, 20 years ago, we decided, company I work for, we should sell pensions on the post offices. At this time, we had post offices. Today, we don't have post offices. But then we had post offices. So we put these uh, uh, blankets in the post offices, and we teach the people working there, and there were no sales whatsoever at all. No one did this, because it was supposed to take this blanket and, and then uh, put some... Uh, and then we asked the, uh, the um, people working in the post office, why? They said, no, they want, they, want some, uh, they want some advice. They want to speak to a person. Okay, and this manager, uh, market manager who did this, so he described to me, and he asked them, what is, what is the question that they ask? What, what are they asking for? Are they asking for how long, how much? No, they are asking, is this good for me? And therefore he said, therefore I traveled around the country to every post office and teach them to say yes. So then they asked, is this good for me? And then this person said, yes. Then they bought it. So, but the need, the internet is not good enough, so, so uh, thank you.